Hello everybody and welcome once again into the Edge Ace Arena in Bensonville, Illinois for night two of the weekend series between the Chicago Cougars and the Battle Creek Colonels. Andy Petzinger once again along to bring you along on this ride. Uh, last night we had one heck of a hockey game, 108 total penalty minutes in the hockey game and it ended up being a 3-2 shootout victory for the Battle Creek Colonels. Uh, started out with the Cougars coming out with the, uh, a, a goal at the end of the second period, near the end of the second period. A, an answer by Battle Creek at the three minute mark and then the Cougars once more at the end of the second to take a two to one lead. A late goal with 2.26 left to go in the game, tied it for Battle Creek. Nothing doing through overtime and Battle Creek ended up winning in a four round shootout. The ending game winning shootout goal coming from uh, Nate Fricky. So um, today, in the in the hockey game for today, it looks like we're going to see just about the same lineups. We'll go downstairs. To Andy scores for the uh, the starting lineups here uh, in a moment. But a big story from yesterday's game that might roll over for today. I mentioned all the penalties. Power play for both sides. 0 for 8 for the Cougars. 0 for 5 for Battle Creek. And talking with the Battle Creek coach earlier today, he was saying they are the best penalty killing team in the league as far as numbers go. So um, the Cougars are, are definitely going to look to rectify on that today on trying to convert on some of those power plays as well as trying to stay out of the box themselves. They only took, uh, Battle Creek only had five uh, penalties in the game. However, 56 penalty minutes for the Cougars is just a little bit too much. So uh, we'll send it on down for Andy Stores for the starting lineups. Starting lineups for tonight over for the Battle Creek Colonels. Back in between the pipes is number one, 31, Sebastian Wigfield. He was phenomenal yesterday. 50 shots on net, 48 saves. Coming to today's game with a 3-2 and two record. 358 goals against and a 929 save percentage. Camden Winters and Owen Miller on the back end. Joshua Schaefer, Alexander Young, and Nate Fricky up front for the Colonels. And for your Chicago Cougars on the back, uh, in between the pipes, number 33, Sam Burkle, coming into his fourth game today. He's got a 2-1 record of 471 goals against and an 847 save percentage. On defense, Dmitry Musulimov and Aiden Kennedy. And starting up front, number eight, Gertis Palauskas, 88, Frank Cooley, uh, excuse me, Frank Kula, and number 24, Nikolai Arayashev. And Arayashev actually was phenomenal yesterday with the puck. The puck was finding him. He just couldn't find the back of the net. So let's see if uh, if that changes today. However, nobody could find the back of the net yesterday against Mr. Wigfield to our right. So got a good game here in front of us. The Cougars felt like they should have won yesterday. They felt like that was supposed to be an easy game to walk into, and they ended up getting beat on home ice on their first home game here at the edge. So you can bet your bottom dollar that the Cougars are going to come out with quite a passion today. One big roster change on the Cougar side of things. Connor Shuckman not in the lineup today. Out to the point. Drops it off for O'Brien, who ran into a check. That was Barone. And now back the other way comes Jaros. Jaros was stick-checked as soon as he crossed over the blue line. Nice job there, stepping up by Hayden Cunningham. Held in, though, by Barron. For Jaros, his shot deflected on net by Hossi, and that's a good save by Burkle. His first good stop, good attempt of the night. And away comes Nate Fricky. He goes off the boards, but held in by Kennedy. Trying to turn around, shot, that's blocker to side by Wigfield. Rebound, kicked aside as well by the right pad of Wigfield. Palauskas with it in behind. Trying to find some space, a wraparound try, that stopped. Rebound, another save. Oh, that one just happened to hit Wigfield. Arayashev with the shot on that one. Now it's pushed out to center ice and a break possibly coming for Schaefer over the line. Schaefer to the backhand, takes a shot. He had whiffed on it and it goes on net, but Burkle will stop. So the power play, the power play for the uh, Colonels that ended up going 0 for 5 last night has their first opportunity today. It's Jaros with the puck. Takes a shot, he scores! Oh, a screen. Uh, Sam Burkle did not see that puck at all until it hit the inside of his blocker. He got a decent chunk of it. However, it did slip in behind him 
and hit the back of the net. So 15 seconds into the power play, the Colonels have the first goal of the game. So at 8.57 of the first period, Battle Creek comes through with a power play tally, just 15 seconds into their power play. But the Cougars have come back with a couple of strong opportunities, they score! Palauskas in front to Kula, who chips it home! We're tied! Norton had that to Cooper Brackett, back to Edwards at the point, a long shot, deflected, big save by Wigfield, and he knocks the rebound aside. However, Palauskas regains control for Edwards at the point. Edwards gets it right back, oh, and it just escaped. Coming up with speed is TJ Haas. Looks across for Arthur Pollock, however, could not catch that in stride, but they are able to stay on side. Hanley in front of backhand shot, that one was stopped. Now picked up by Hanley again. Haas helps out, back to Hanley. Looking in front for Ben Moak, that one didn't connect. Both teams back at full strength. Kennedy throws one towards the net. O'Brien will bounce it out to center ice. Gets a favorable hop and it's Arayashev. He's got Palauskas to Palauskas. He holds on to it. Oh, and he tried to drag it to the backhand, but Wigfield was able to get the blade of the stick on it and knock that one out of the way. Gets cleared out of play, so we get a whistle staying inside the Battle Creek zone. Great active stick there by Sebastian Wigfield as that was a, an open six by four if he doesn't get a blade of the stick on that. Mentioned that Wigfield is the next Cougar. I'm sure he's seen that move a couple times from uh, Palauskas in practice. So he was prepared for it. Talked to a couple of the, uh, the Cougars before the, uh, before the game today and asked them how weird it was playing against somebody like Sebastian Wigfield who was a pretty big part of this team last year. Played a lot of games. They said it was it was pretty strange, but kind of cool knowing that there was a guy on the other side that they're pretty friendly with. And you know, even though they wanted to win, they were happy he played well. It's back the other way. It comes Jordan Osafo to the backhand, try to get a pass across, but that one was knocked down by the Cougars. Welcome back to the Edge Ice Arena in Bensonville, Illinois. Andy Petzinger here bringing you Chicago Cougars hockey. We are back for the second period of play. We are tied at one after one. Bit of a slow period in that period. Shots with 13 to six in favor of the Cougars. However, Battle Creek got off first with a goal coming from a deflection from Josh Getson. Shot came from the top of the near circle from Ryan Jaros. Getson deflected it in front of the net just underneath the blocker of Sam Burkle. And into the back of the net for a one nothing lead. However, 24 seconds later, came the Cougars. It was Gerdes Palauskas behind the net with a beautiful feed in front of Frank Kula, who pots home his first of the year. Kula went upstairs, glove high, and a great feed for Palauskas. And I'll tell you what, that's a play that the Cougars have been trying to make work. This entire game is going in behind and trying to find a soft spot in the slot, so let's keep an eye on that as the second period goes along. As the puck is dropped, we're underway. Clearing attempt by Miller. Deflects out to the point. Kennedy shot deflects off a leg to Kula. The backhander. Save made rebound. Lays in the crease. Wigfield diving after it. Finally finds a way to put a glove on top of it. He finds Brackett a turnaround. Try to flex off the referee. Norton back to Brackett. Couldn't get control of it. Now Brackett for Norton. Johnson in behind. Out to the point, it's Edwards. A lot of time spent in the zone here. One or two things is gonna happen. It's either gonna be a goal or a penalty and the net gets knocked off the mooring. So no line change for the Colonels on this extra, extra long shift. They cannot get a line change and a fresh group is gonna come out for the Cougars here. Now the Colonels, Colonels are trying to buy a little extra extra time here. That's a veteran move. Ref told them to stay out. They acted like their hearing aids weren't working. Ended up going to the bench and that just bought them an extra 15, 20 seconds. Face off to the right of Wigfield, won by the Cougars. It's O'Brien at the point. His shot deflects it on net, kicked aside by Wigfield. 
Kept alive in the corner by the Cougars. Out to the point, O'Brien holds it in. His long wrist shot floats wide. Henderson, the shot, he scores! From a bad angle, it's Henderson, a turnaround shot. Trey Henderson goes up into the upper quadrant above the glove of Sebastian Wickfield. It's a two to one Cougar lead. Rebound and gets knocked off the puck. And finally, Battle Creek will flip on out to the neutral zone. Oh, a dump in, hits off of Fricky. He's got some space. Fricky in over the line, takes a shot. That one's knocked aside by Burkle. Schaefer tried a backhand feed towards the middle. Nobody home but Cougars. And they'll go push it out to center ice. Nice back pressure from Palauskas. Turns it over, walks it and fires. That's a big save by Wickfield. Three by the score! <laughs> Nikolai Arayashev, the rebound went right onto his stick, driving the net. Goes five hole and it's 3-1 Chicago. Battle Creek having a tough time exiting out of their own zone. TJ Haas now has the puck. Haas in behind. Drops this one off. He's looking for some help from Pollock. He's there. Pollock looking in front for Haas. They score! They're gonna count it. The net was off the moorings, deflected off of a stick and goes into the top corner. The net was just as far off as it is now when it went in, so I wasn't sure if they were gonna count it or not. But the referee is signaling good goal. Bracket takes a last second shot that sails wide and the second period will end. What a response coming from the Chicago Cougars. This is the response that they had been looking for really since last night. They had not quite gotten it until now. A three goal period. Starting out with a beautiful turnaround wrist shot from Trey Henderson that finds the top near corner after the Cougars had some sustained pressure and the Colonels could not clear it out of their own zone. They were trapped, couldn't get a line change. Cougars took advantage. And then the second goal for the Cougars came from Nikolai Arayashev, also his first, a beautiful play from Gertis Palauskas to create some back pressure and turn over the puck. Came in on a three on one, threw the puck on net, rebound, pounced out to the slot. Five hole goal for Nikolai Arayashev and then to finish it off on the PK on a shorthanded attempt. TJ Haas goes upstairs into the upper right hand corner on a net that had come off the moorings but the referees decided that that was gonna count. So it's a four to one lead for the Cougars going into the third period. And we'll bring you that third period right after this. You're listening to the Cougars on Flow Hockey. All right, and welcome back to the Edge Ice Arena here in Bensonville, Illinois, bringing you third period of hockey in between the Chicago Cougars and the Battle Creek Colonels after period number one. It was a pretty even hockey game. 13 to six for the shots in favor of the Cougars. We were tied at one. After period two, it's a four to one Cougar lead. Shots were 12 to seven in that period. So even though the Cougars held a lot of zone time in that period, lots of shots were really not getting through and or were getting deflected away from the net. So not as much action for Sebastian Wigfield in this one as it was yesterday. Conversely, on the other end of things, Sam Burkle is starting to get a little bit more pucks his way than Bennett Peters was seeing last night. But we start the third period at five on five. It's Kula against Dunarolo. Couldn't really get more than two feet over the blue line. Now Jaros comes in. Jaro is walking to the bottom of the circles and he scores, what a shot. Ryan Jaros goes upstairs over Sam Burkle. 
and it's a 4-2 hockey game. Boy, a play that looked like just about nothing. And finally, Jaros gets off the schneid. It's six games without a goal for him. Thought he had one earlier today. He for sure has one now. Pollock heads the other way for Haas. Gets it right back again. Back down to Haas. Haas looking in front, bad save. Nice job by Sebastian Wigfield coming across with the right pad. They were looking for either one of the two men that were sitting in front of the, of the goal crease. And a real nice stop by Sebastian Wigfield at the right game. Pad. Let's this go beyond 60 minutes. Now the Colonel's looking to cook something up on the power play. It's Jaros. Jaros walking in, tried another short side shot, but that one floated up over the net. He's got it again on the far side, looking out for Osafo. Didn't get it to him, but Hasi there, his shot. Glove save and a beauty. Fully outstretched. Sam Burkle. Had Getson right in front as well. Couldn't get anything off of it though. And now Jaros comes back with Osafo. Jaros cutting to the far side. Knocked off the puck by Edwards. But Jaros regains control. Jaros here will move it across to Dunaroglu. His shot was stopped. Rebound off the cold post. Rebound. They score. First shot went off the post and knocked the net off its moorings. And then Hasi picked up the rebound and put it in. So the second goal today where the net was knocked off the moorings and the second power play goal for Battle Creek. He'll wrap it around the boards, held in by Middendorf. His long shot is sticked aside by Wigfield. Norton with it. Comes out towards the slot and bounced off of a defender in it, Norton just a turnaround shot. Had that one go off, Toby Patak, and into the back of that net, it's five to three. Hanley, Pollock, Haas, Kennedy, and Musalimov as off to the bench, now that we're the other way, it's Wakefield to the bench now. There's a shot, big save made by Burkle. A one-timer from Hasi. Good keep it by Dunaroglu. Bounces to the near side, taken by Musalimov. He'll clear it down all the way. Denuraglu has to win this race. TJ Haas, look at the wheels. Wins the race, saves the icing. Moves it to Pollock, misses an empty net. But that doesn't matter. The final seconds tick off. Cougars win. They salvage the series. Tie it at one game apiece. Take the game, five to three. This was what was expected by Coach Josh Dollinger at the beginning of the game, or excuse me, at the beginning of last night's game. Didn't get that effort last night, gets it today. Results in the first home victory of the year here at the new home of the Cougars, Edge Ice Arena. A 5-3 victory started out with Battle Creek getting on the board first. A tip in from Josh Getson in front of the net on the power play. Gave him a 1-0 lead. The Cougars answered right back. 24 seconds later. Frank Kula answered back. And then starting out in the second period, Trey Henderson, his very first junior hockey goal, gave him a two to one lead. Nikolai Arayashev with his first with the Cougars, made it three to one in the second, then to finish it out, a shorty from TJ Haas. Gave them a four to one lead heading into the third, but Battle Creek was not going away quietly at the 11-21 mark of the third. A short side, top shelf shot from Ryan Jaros. Found the back of the net to make it a four to two hockey game and then they cut it down to one on their second power play goal of the game. 
off the post, went right out to Connor Hassey, found a wide open net, albeit was off its moorings. But the referees determined it was going to go in anyway. And then a quick answer from the Cougars to finish everything off. Liam Norton threw the puck towards the net, deflected off of a defenseman, and bounces into a wide open cage. So the Cougars walk out of this one with a 5-3 victory. The next game for the Chicago Cougars gonna come on Saturday, November 18th, a week from today. They are heading out to Detroit for a showcase where they will start off on the 18th playing against the River Kings and throughout the weekend they'll play the Columbus Mavericks as well as the Cincinnati Cyclones and the Metro Jets. So tune in here to Flow Hockey for those hockey games. We'll be back here at the edge on the 8th, Friday, December the 8th, against the Chicago Crush, their uptown rival. So feel free to tune in on Flow Hockey for that, or come on out to the Edge Ice Arena here in Bensonville, hang out with us, and enjoy the ride. But for right now, we enjoy you, or we appreciate you tuning into our broadcast for all of us involved, this is Andy Petzinger saying so long. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.